Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. All right, he's back in the bullpen today. We have Juan Velas Mill, commentator, Young Voices. He's made appearances in many places, Fox News, Telemundo, MSNBC, the list goes on and on. We do not hold those things against him here. Good to have you back, Juan, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing quite well. I gotta ask you, man, we're gonna chop it up about this erasing of racism and not in the way that it sounds. The Republicans are trying to erase racism by acting as if it doesn't exist, never existed, gaslighting people. It's not the kind of erasing of racism that we actually know could hopefully erase some of the racist elements inside of this country. Why do you think there's this push and everybody seems to be on the same page? to erase the reality that racism even existed in America. I don't want to presume what you know, believe about that particular topic. So if you would give us your um, proclamation, I would then opine. I don't really know exactly what you're talking about. I, If you have a specific example and yep. and I could respond because I sure. I do think that a lot of the times like we hyper fixate on race to a degree that's quite detrimental. Right. And you see this, this whole race hustling world uh, taking over politics. And when okay. you look at it, I, I was, you know, watching the show before this, and you're talking about the right of neo Nazism, and you're talking about some of the cases with cops killing innocent black people. And those all matter, but at the end of it all, like those are not the priorities of most Americans. Uh, well, well, speak for yourself. It's a priority of a particular group, and you don't have to subscribe to that group. So, how dare you? Say that's not a priority to most Americans because statistics betray you, sir. But I will what, what give you a proclamation. What statistics are you talking about? I will give what you statistics, statistics in just about? a moment so that you can stop gaslighting, dear brother. You ask me a question. I'll provide an answer for you and a proper education along with it. So the question you posed is what am I talking about when I'm saying that there is this erasing of racism in America by those who are conservative by acting like it never happened? Nikki Haley said, that this country has never been a racist nation. It was, in fact, Nikki Haley who said that the Civil War, when she denied that it was fought over racism or slavery, uh, she said, I should have said the truth in a later interview. It was uh, Governor DeSantis, uh, DeSantis who said, well, um, this is destroying our children. It's called critical race theory, not even taught in K through 12 education. So when you talk about the reality of racism or slavery, look at the policies as well as the proclamations that have been made by major presidential candidates. And you can't sure. dismiss the reality sure. no, no, yeah. of slavery. Hold on, brother, I ain't finished. You can't dismiss the reality of a DeSantis appointing a school board in Florida who says, well, you know, skills, trades were learned by the enslaved. Highlighting something positive. Dr. Richie, Let me tell I, you why. No, man, I'm I, not finished. I just have not, to disagree with on. you there. You can but. disagree, brother, but when I'm finished, when somebody says that about slavery, understand what slavery is. Slavery is human sex trafficking. Slavery is, slavery is murder. When have you ever heard someone contextualize a human being being trafficked or a child being or another human being being murdered as they learned something positive in the process? Never. Except when it applied to the enslaved Africans in this country. Go ahead. Yeah, of course, I think slavery is bad. And, and I, I think Nikki Haley's comments for not agree. I'm not a big Nikki Haley fan. In regard to CRT, I think most Americans don't like CRT. And it's Do not- Do you know what it is? Yeah, critical race theory. What is it? Well, you tell me what it is, like critical race but, theory. But you, if you don't like it, you got to know what it is, brother. You said you yeah, don't of course, like it, what is it? Of course I know what it is. So critical race theory is that they use a critical lens in which you hyper fixate on race and you see how it affects different parts of society and you use it to make decisions on how law yields disproportionate effects and blah, 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 blah. But on education- but that's it's not. That's not what critical race theory is. Critical race theory is a theoretical framework utilized in doctoral studies in order to analyze particular cause, effects, and outcomes. It is not something that is traditionally taught in any type of collegiate atmosphere until you it's get into doctoral taught, studies. It's uh, it's sir, uh, uh, allow me to finish. 
you, you, you use a theoretical framework, critical race theory, most people can't even define it, much less utilize it appropriately. And in the Florida laws, where we said, or they said, okay, critical anti-critical race theory is the bill. Guess what was not in the law? Critical race theory. They never banned critical race theory. Dr. They Ritchie. used that as a front, and critical race theory wasn't even confined in the context of the document because what they were banning was one thing: teachers' ability to teach actual history. That's not true. I, it I is true. You can look school. it up. My brother's going to a Florida school right now. That's so not your brother true. learned critical yeah, race just theory. That you're making up. And at no, the end no, of your the brother. Life. Wait a minute. Your brother learned critical race theory. He didn't learn critical race theory. Like I understand some conservatives use that term as as well, a, that, that's what I everything. said to you. Yeah, you just but, proved my but point. What what I mean is that critical race theory is used by education professionals to then push a, a certain agenda and the way things are taught. What and agenda and what and what, what agenda? Skills. No, no. Tell me what agenda. That agenda is basically if you go to a very liberal university or a very liberal school, is very guilt centric, and you you make students. Talk about race in 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 ways that are what meant class? to make them feel bad. It 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 does really not. It doesn't advance the interests of most Americans. But but I'm asking what when class all are you that it's following is social cohesion in this country. Just so hyperfixating on race. Have, makes no sense. Do you have any answers at all? What class? What subject? What are you talking about? Uh, some schools have like specific like race dedicated classes. Like what? Uh, What's the name of the class? class? Um. I don't remember. I like it's a particular class in my university. I didn't have that in Florida back what then. What university did you go to? American University. Public or private? It's private. That was private. Do you pay for the classes? Yeah. Which means you get to choose what classes you take, correct? No, I didn't choose that one. That one was forced on me and most It was forced there. on you. What what class was it? What was the name of it? It's about identity and then the structures. It's basically, yes, critical race theory, like very- But what's the name of the class, dear brother? It's called AUX to race, identity, and something else. I don't right, really and, remember. And what was but your major? My major was international relations. But if you're an engineer, so you have in to international, In international relations, you yeah. take a class about diversity, inclusion, or equitable principles. Is somehow yeah. antithetical to you understanding international relations. No, I have a friend who was a computer science major, and he had to take it too. But anyhow, he had, I digress. He, he had what, to take what a I class. Say, what uh, I will say, AU Dr. Class, Ritchie, come on, Dr. Richie. What I will say, and I think this is important, is that every year over one thousand people are killed by cops, and you know many of them are innocent people, for sure, and that should be something we have to fix. But now in America. The priorities of the American people are crime. If you live in a big city, more people are killed in New York and DC together than the entire country by cops. More people are afraid of a crazy homeless guy with a chainsaw than neo Nazis or a cop. So it, it, this is just about priorities. And I think that your priorities, at least on your show, are not on the right place. And that's a problem. And that this is what this is in part what I think. Our country does not need. We don't need mm. more division. We need some social cohesion. Mm. That's some of Tim Scott, you know, very lovey dovey, but he's doing some of that. And that's actually good. Yeah. So, uh, in your opinion, my priorities are adverse to America, correct? Your hyperfixation, yes. Because okay. it, it seems now, like you talk much more about neo Nazis. Than mm. about immigration or mm. homelessness, at least how, from how much, what I can tell this specific well, day. It's unfortunate, but see, this is your uh, this is your ignorance talking, and so because I understand you're coming from a place of ignorance, I'm going to be gracious. Um, we do talk about immigration on this program. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have a doctorate of science in immigration law from Azteca University. I'm sure you're familiar with the university. I hold a doctorate from there in immigration law. So yes, I do talk about immigration. Number two, we talk about homelessness and the cause and effect relationship of the ecosystem that's involved. It's a policy dynamic, not a personal dynamic. We also talk about neo-Nazism because there are people who are oppressed in this nation. And if you don't have an intentional advocacy apparatus for those who are oppressed and have the least amount of power inside of a political or economic structure, 
they will not be heard. They have to have advocates. And unfortunately, most of our elected officials are either feckless cowards or they are purchased by the highest bidder. And so individuals like myself and a few others, we try to be intentional about making sure that they have a prioritization with us rather than those who have money. Does that make sense to you? I mean, I guess like it. It's your show. And I just think that if I were in your shoes, I would talk a little bit more about those issues than about race and some official in some county saying the N word. I think most Americans, even most of what black does it Americans, mean? Again, what does I, it I mean? Can't talk for most black Americans, but yeah, if but you you're trying them, to. You're what? talking to a black America right now, so you don't have okay, to. Okay, go I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you. If you were watching the news, well, it's shown show, so of course you're gonna like it, but we rather have someone talking about how to reduce poverty or about some person saying the N-word in some office somewhere. Let me show you how it's, it's connected. Most one. of the time I've noticed like we hyper fixate on mm. this person said the N-word, this person said this, this person said oh, that. Okay. It's a little too much. Well, let me show you how it's connected. Policy does not get to escape your personal proclamation. If there's an elected official that says the N-word, we actually just discussed the cop. A cop who sent messages saying, I hate black people. He didn't say black people, he used the N word. He, ex- he was extremely racist in the way he contextualized not only black folk, but the attorneys of black people. Told one attorney, N word, I'll shoot you too. And that got him fired. Now, why is that important? Because right now the DA says that 54 cases are now compromised because those cases relied on the testimony of a known racist cop among them who could have been biased in their expression of the case during presentation. That's number one. Number two, when you have an elected official who is in charge of policy and their bias is before them, but they are acting as if they are actually fair people. They are arbitrators of justice, but they are racist against a particular demographic. If they were racist against your culture, you would not want them judging policy for you and your family. You would want them to be exposed so they would not have position of power over you, correct? Does that make sense to you, brother? I mean, of course it makes sense. Like, Thank I, you, I appreciate it. Thinking we're, All right. it. It seems that we're fighting against, at least you, against a ghost. Because most What's Republicans, the most Republicans are like, oh yeah, it's super cool when a cop kills an innocent black person, or we love racism. Like this, that's so just you're saying that, that it's not happening in this country. I got like, you. So it, uh, I, I think I understand what you're saying. You're saying that because the vast majority of cops are not saying the N word uh, in text messages, or the vast majority of elected officials are not being caught being racist outside of their job. You're saying that I should not highlight. The injustices they bring. No, no. You. What are you saying? You can do whatever you want. I just think that it, this is an, a show that well, well, a lot I, of I people watch. That. A lot of people watch, and yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, but how do you, how do these specific issues affect most of your watchers? I'm not entirely sure, but not only this show, but when I look a lot at a lot of other mm-hmm. shows, it seems like they'll rather talk about these issues than about all the other things that affect us. Case in point, the southern border, for example. Like, how many times have you talked about that today or this week or last week? Sorry. You don't watch my show, do you? I, I do. I watch it occasionally. Oh, okay. So, How so if you watch my program, dear brother, you will know that I talked about the southern border last week and the week before that, by the way. The standoff okay, compare, that happened. Compare it with, compare it with, uh, with racism. Like, it's. So, so. You, you need me, now let me just get this right. You would like me to speak uh, more about other things to suit you no. rather than, <laughs> well, tell me what you want me to do, brother. What, what do you ask me to do for it? Let me I see if I could accommodate. You what do you need your me to show do now? However you want to do your well, show. Well, I promise you, I damn sure will. Okay, okay. I'll tell you exactly what to do. Okay. If I were in your shoes, yeah. I will, of course, talk about you know all these instances. Mm-hmm. When appropriate, sometimes some of them I don't think are that newsworthy. Mm-hmm. So you'll basically what, do what I'm doing. No, not entirely. I think, but, but, I think but kind can, of. No, yeah, kind of. All right, I appreciate you. Thank to you. Some I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, dear brother. It's been fun. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely.